everyone. So I wanted to read you one of my favorite stories, and this is called Georgia's Terrific Colorific Experiment. Now, the reason why this is one of my favorites is because I used to think just like one of the characters in this book, and I used to think that just because I love science, that that meant that I couldn't also be an artist. So I'm hoping that you realize as well as I did that that is not the case after we read this together. So this is Georgia's Terrific Colorific Experiment by Zoe Persico. This is Georgia. She comes from a family of fantastic artists. Her mother, father, brother, and grandma leave Georgia in awe of everything they create. Even the family dog has some creative ideas. But Georgia is special. She dreams of being a scientist. From the vastness of the cosmos to the cell structure of plants and animals, she is fascinated by science. Georgia loves studying the works of famous scientists, too. She is captivated by Marie Curie's studies of radioactivity. She admires Galileo Galilei's study of gravity. She fawns over Isaac Newton's conclusions about the color spectrum. One day, Georgia has an idea. I've read countless studies and handfuls of hypotheses, but I have never created my own unique experiment. If I can do that, I am sure to be a great scientist. Need any help? Her mother asks. I can show you how to sketch out your plans. No, thank you. Let me give you a few tips, her father states. I think adding some color could really enhance your scientific findings. That will not be necessary. I don't know, Georgia. You need a pop of visual awesomeness, her brother says. I can show you how to sculpt something amazing. Enough! I don't need any help. I am not an artist. I am a scientist. Science is about proper calculations and not silly imaginative ideas. Fine, her brother says. Don't be like us. Go ahead with your fancy schmancy calculator, books, and beakers. Hopefully your experiment doesn't bore you too much. Since my science-ness seems to bore you, I can be found in my science hut alone. With a leap in her step, Georgia packs everything she can and leaves the house. Past the garden and through the gate, she runs into the woods. Georgia can finally begin her experiment and be a true scientist. At first, she is having the most extraordinary time. But then she has some trouble getting started. What about how gravity works? Wait, this has been done before too. I'll create my own radioactive material, Georgia says, but that's not original or safe, is it? Georgia sighs. She'll need to come up with her own ideas to create something special. Georgia has the motivation, but where's the inspiration? How do scientists come up with such amazing experiments? What am I missing? But then an idea strikes. How does my family get creative, she wonders. Georgia tries something new, something that's not from her library. It feels odd for her at first, but with every colorful beaker she fills and each new shape she draws, her excitement grows.
It is time to head home. Georgia makes her way back. What do you want? Rubbing her, your boring science in our faces, asks her brother. I want to show you all something, Georgia says. Science can be a work of art, too. Georgia's mom smiles. I bet you can teach us some fun science facts that will help us with our art. Georgia smiles back. And I bet you can give me some great art tips so I can invent more beautiful experiments. This is Georgia, the scientist, and her family of fantastic artists. They used to work separately, but now together, they create sculptures, paintings, and experiments that leave everyone in awe. Even the family dog helps out. Georgia and her family agree, with art and science working in harmony, inspiration never runs dry. So I'm hoping that you also can find a love of combining art and science after reading that awesome book. Take care and I hope to see you soon.